All right, we're gonna do with another installation of why I bought a certain piece of equipment. Uh, I just did the I just did the one on the the hay grinder, but I have limited time on this machine because it is actually leaving tomorrow. Uh, this is my 2170 square baler. Uh, awesome awesome piece of equipment love the piece of equipment and I bought it because I do some custom hay work uh, and I've never owned a big square baler and I wanted it's a direction that I'm I'm going uh, it's a direction I've, I've been going and this particular machine became available uh, last year which would have been 2016, winter of 2016, I was talking to a guy about something and he actually happened to have this machine and he was in bad shape, bad uh, financial shape and he sold it, sold it to me. Uh, all They sold all their hay equipment uh, on big iron but I bought this beforehand. This baler had 10,000 bales on it and when he told me what he wanted for it, the first thought in my mind was buy it and sell it. Because I've been on, you know, I've been looking quite a few of these balers. I knew what they were worth. Been on Tractor House. Um, and that's, you know, Tractor House is always about five, ten thousand more than what they're actually worth. And so I ended up buying this. He originally told me fifty thousand for the baler. 2013 model and come to find out he owed 59 on it and we met it and he just he had to get it gone so I bought it at $56,000 I did not do any custom work with this machine I had some lined up and uh, you know typical custom work you know guy guy changed his mind and Wanted to play fair with everybody, so I ended up cutting the feed and not bailing it. But I put a thousand bales across this machine on my own feed. <clears throat> Excellent. I love, love these big square balers. So when I first bought the machine, my thought was, and I, I talked to my banker, I had talked to my, my Agco rep before I ever bought it, and I was like, hey, can you guys sell this machine? And I actually talked about them about maybe them buying it and um, doing it. So my original thought was buy it, put it through with them to sell it because uh, I just bought a brand new round baler and it covered my down payment on my round baler and whatever else at the time because I thought I'd maybe make five thousand off the you know quick purchase of the machine uh, just for what they were telling me. They were kind of seeing as the value on them. Kind of go up here. Talk to my banker. They said, yeah, buy the machine. Get it bought. So I bought the machine. And they said, well, why don't you uh, keep it? Keep it for a year. And use it. See how you like it. And we'll go from there. So, okay. Little raccoon tracks right there. I bought the machine... Used it. I put a thousand bales across of it. Across it, you know that's fourteen dollars a bale. I put a fourteen thousand dollars worth of worth of hay through the machine, and couldn't have been happier. Uh, I was so happy. I was thinking about keeping the machine, but the problem is this coming year I have absolutely. I'm probably not going to bale any square bales of my own. I may not put up any hay of my own. And so, if I would have kept it, you know, $14,000 a year payment for it just to sit there. I was talking to my bank. I said, all right. You know, I, I like the machine. Let's, I've used it. Let's get our game plan going. And they said, sell the machine. You know you can make money on it. Get it sold. It takes care of your notes. And if you want, if you want to buy a machine to keep for good, 
Yeah, as soon as this thing sold, buy a machine. Uh, you know, I, when I first heard that, I'm like, eh. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm only gonna complain. Uh, I just, I sold this machine at Christmas time, so I've had this machine a full year. Uh, my dealer, actually, they had some people interested in it. They didn't sell it. I ended up selling this machine. And I've had friends don't say, don't say this, but you know what? My whole, my whole deal is honesty. Let's, let's keep it out there. And, and you're going to notice this machine's gone at some point. I sold the machine. I was asking 75 for it. I would like to have had 72. I sold this machine for $70,000. I bought it for 56. I sold it for 70. That's fourteen thousand dollars. I put I probably put five hundred dollars into the machine. I put up fourteen thousand dollars worth of hay that I would have had to hire somebody else to do. This machine made a killing. It made an absolute killing. Am I sad to see the machine go? Absolutely. I I really truly like the machine. It's in an amazing shape. I don't think I'll ever find one for the price. That I found this one in that shape at all. I, I don't think I will. Turn it around here. It just, but, um, you know, I told the, when I went and borrowed the money, I told the bank, you know, I'm going to buy it and sell it. And uh, I stuck to my word. And that's something you got to do. I mean, that's fantastic piece of equipment uh if i'd known now what's what's coming down the pike i may have i may have argued with them a little bit like hey i gotta keep this machine but no i'm not i'm not going to i i sold it and it paid paid the down payment on my new round baler it paid for a disc that disc i bought and i put up a train load of hay with it so I'm just, I'm so pleased with it as it's like the only deal I've really ever made that's, that's been that good. Uh, but I, I will say this and that's, that's why I'm making this video now is all right. I got a tractor there I'm paying for, I got a tractor here I'm paying for, you know, stuff like that. But can you buy and sell equipment? Yes, you can. Um, and, I, and this is a prime example. I know that I'm going to want a, a square baler. I I don't know that I'm going to want as new a one as this. Or if I go, I may want a 3x3 three three baler. It's kind of what I'm leaning towards. 3x4 is great. You know, 4x4s four four are a little too big for what we're doing. And and I'll, I'll show you exactly why right now. 3x4s uh, are great. They fit behind the cake feeder. You know, there's, there's 2,000 pounds worth of feed in there. You know, this 1,200-pound bale to 1,500-pound bale, depending on how much you set your pressure. You know, we're we're loaded. Now, now my pickup, I've got F550 springs under this thing, but I'm running a single rear wheel, so I've got a lot of extra deal. I don't have airbags. Um, but, you know, I put two up here. You know, I put it, we went and fed the other day, I put two up here. But this cake feeder is completely full. You know, I got that bale in there. So, the reason why we'd want to go with a 3x3 three three is, you know, we, we could put one bale of, like, alfalfa or grass, and one bale of, like, hay grazer, and feed two different types of feed. Whereas where we're feeding cake and, you know, hay, it's, it's a little more selective that way. Um... This works fine. Four by fours, you really, really overload the pickups because we're running, running through the pastures, and it's. I mean, it'll it'll overload the truck. Just wears them out. But if you're gonna buy and sell equipment, uh, number one, you better know a lot about that equipment before you buy it. And I talked to the dealer before I bought this. I talked. To, I went and saw the machine. Uh, you got to kind of move pretty quick on it. I mean, number two, you have to buy that machine well below market value. And that is a very, very hard thing to do. That's a very hard thing to do. And this is just something that just fell into my lap. And I, I ran with it. 
Um, honestly, this this would have been the perfect machine to keep. It really would have. Uh, but that's that's not my intention with it. Uh, I would like to, but that's that's not my intention when I first started. And your intentions can change. That's perfectly fine. If you decide you want to keep it, keep it. But like I said, I don't have any score bailing this coming year. So that's fourteen thousand dollars. I'd have to come up with on a payment or eleven thousand somewhere in there that I, I just I don't have. You know, I'm I'm I need to buy a wheel loader for my feed yard. I need to buy a hay processor. I need to buy more cattle. I need to. I've got a lot of things I need to be doing, and. You you have to look at it managing your money. And for me, I've got to manage my my money. And this this is just the best best thing I can do is take the money and run. So number one, you need to know that you can get the machine pretty I mean you need to have a good idea of where your end market is before you write that check for the machine. So I knew that I could get it sold through my equipment dealer, you know, through commission. They just put it up and sell it for me because it's that much under the market. Um, and the guy just did not want to deal with the dealers. He not happy with them, but that's not my problem. Uh, and for me, I held on to it for a year, and God, it's it's amazing. I would buy one of these in a heartbeat again. I would probably sit on like Big Iron or something and just sit there and watch them. And I would buy, I'd either buy one of these or a three by three. And I, I, I honestly, I think I would step up to the, you know, the 20, 2150 series instead of the old, older Heston. But let's, you know, I'm going to have to see when I do buy a square baler where my money's at. And that, that's going to tell me a lot. Do I want to buy a, a newer, better machine that I don't mind making the payments? Or do I want to buy an older machine that's not as expensive. You know, if all I'm going to do is bale wheat straw with it, I can get an older machine. And I'd be perfectly happy because I'm only going to bale, you know, 400 bales a year. That's fine. Like, I don't need an ex I, I don't need a $14,000 a year payment to go bale wheat straw. Um, I just don't. And so, so that's probably all I'd really do with one of these is, is bale wheat straw. I got my new route baler, and you know it's kind of where that's at. I'm not not gonna put up any any major amount of hay this coming year, unless you know custom work and all custom work is round bales pretty much. Round bales are squares, and I'm I don't have any squares lined up at all, or I probably would have kept the machine. But I I have a lot of other stuff that's coming up this year. That I may cut back on my custom hay work even more. So that's where we're at. I'm probably not going to put this video up for several months. Uh, just kind of getting it down the line in the list of equipment so it's not just first out there. But yeah, this that is why I bought this big square baler. It's so number one, I've never run them on my own stuff. Number two, I bought it to make money, and it surprisingly made money. Now, that's probably just a fluke for me. It really is. That's This is probably a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. Um, but, man, it it did work. And the, what really kind of makes me turn my head, you know, think about it is, well, I know I'm going to buy another square baler. And I bought this one way under market value. The next one I'm going to have to buy is going to be market value. And that's not very, <laughs> I'm not very uh, thrilled about that at all. But, you know, that's that's where life is right now. And we're going to go from there. We got to, I'm young. We got to build this thing up. And I, you know, I got to get, I got to get a lot of stuff bought for my operation. And honestly, I got two pieces of equipment I've got one for the feed yard I've got to get bought. I've got to get a wheel loader bought. And then I've got a piece of equipment for the ranch i got to buy. i got to buy a damn bulldozer. And, 
You know, at twenty to thirty thousand for a dozer, and the wheel loader is going to be thirty-five to forty thousand, and it's to manage your money is is key. You you've got to have the work for it, and I've got the work for those pieces of equipment. I've got to get them bought because our roads are in terrible shape. We got to get some cleachy. We got to you know the dozer. We got to lay pipelines. We got to do road work and i've got some rock pits and we really need them to push up rock so we can put it and do all the road work uh the feed yard it's gonna have to get a loader as much as we're feeding and as big as this deal is really kind of going we got to get a loader and you know those payments they're not free and yeah i'm using my 7800 now and you got to look at it okay transmission by the time you have deer put it in 15,000 that's half of a wheel loader and you know if I keep keep using it the way I'm using it I'm gonna have to put one in so I might as well buy a wheel loader and prolong a transmission and yeah you know save myself put that 15,000 towards something else so that's just it goes back to it manage your money um but hey tell me what you think tell me you think i'm stupid for selling it or i'm stupid for uh telling you actually the the real numbers and i'm i'm not joking around those are the real numbers i'm not i'm not blowing smoke up your ass so thanks for watching stay tuned for more